Good day to everybody. Rob Mazak here. I am a psychic medium. I do a lot of different podcasts, and I'm sure that some of you guys out there have listened to my channel and would understand that I simply take some idea or ideas, and we are going to let it roll and see where my conversation at least takes us. And I woke up this morning really early and could not go back to sleep, probably 3.30 this morning. And we all know that, or well, at least we've all heard that, it's the, what, the witching hour, 3 o'clock. And sort of that means that when you are being awoken or being forced awake, especially those type of hours and those morning hours between two and three, somewhere in there, it usually means that you are supposed to be paying attention to that force outside of yourself and begin to tune in and listen. Now that force outside of ourself means a lot of things to a lot of people. You know, some people believe in God, some people believe in the universe, some people believe in a lot, a lot of different ideas. I think, though, that that's not part of the discussion so much today as it is that we generally all accept that there is some type of external force to us that seems to influence us or interact with us brings us information, nudges us, does whatever, gives us signs. I think for this particular talk, let's just all uh, you know, come to an agreement or for argument's sake, state that there is a force out there. And today I will use it as the universe, like the collective. I take that really seriously when I wake up at those hours. Of course, I get up a lot. I'm an older guy, you know, trips to the bathroom, fun times. You know, the joys of getting older, right? If I cannot go back to sleep, if I cannot really relax and get another couple of hours in of sleep before I go to my J-O-B, my job, my work, then I am going to get up and I'm going to do something. What I'm doing now is I'm talking to you guys. And so I'm going to try to use my time as effectively as I can. If I'm awake... It's a lot better to do this than to sit and scroll on TikTok or something. Very addicting, by the way. So what I wanted to talk about is divine timing, I guess, is a good way to put it. I did do an article on this, I don't know, not too long back. And I created an, a video from that using AI. It's kind of cool. AI is really interesting thing. It really does help, just as long as we don't get too lazy with it, right? But I think for me, divine timing has been there my whole entire life. I remember a very specific time when I was in the Marine Corps long ago in my 20s. I remember being on an airplane going somewhere to a new installation or somewhere for a school or something. I remember looking out the window and thinking to myself, you know, it feels like I'm simply on a ride and I'm just watching the flow of my life and everything's just kind of falling into place like it's supposed to. And I know that sounds really cool in a lot of ways. It, maybe we don't have to necessarily think about our life because it may be planned out. It may not be. I don't know. But I do believe that we are here to reach particular milestones for whatever agreement we had coming here whether we get to those milestones or not or how quickly we get to them or how slowly we get to them is really up to us because our memory is not necessarily there as to what we're supposed to be doing necessarily however when we begin to tune into our our life and our intuition and our connection with the universe then we can usually figure out after time that we are being guided and we are being directed 
and maybe not it's an it's an entire written out script because I do believe we have influence on our life. I do believe we can create our life as we go along. And you know, sometimes those are good choices, sometimes they're not good choices. And but we can make choices and we can influence where we go and what we do. Now is it always the right thing to do? I'm not entirely sure. I do believe that us being here as human beings in this form against tremendous odds gives us the right and the ability to make choices and choices are always there even if they're limited by governments and in the world and this this reality it doesn't matter but the thing is that i do believe that those that out influence us from the outside the universe once again however you look at that do have a much better view of our lives than we could ever possibly have and can really orchestrate or help us facilitate the right path for the reasons of teaching us and helping us learn and grow and evolve as a soul, a soul having a human, human experience. We are not necessarily humans having a experience as a soul. It's kind of the other way around if you ask me. I believe we are a spirit, a soul in a human body, which is my understanding based on the high probabilities that most people that could be born will never be born, that we are one of the unique and special and chosen people to actually have this experience or experiences based on reincarnation, which I do believe in, whether you do or not, that's okay that overhead view really does make a difference. So I'm a soccer player. You've heard me talk about this. If I'm on the field, I got this very limited view of what is going on. You know, that hundred yards, you know, in front of me as a goalkeeper is all I really pay attention to. There's a lot more going around, going on in the world around that soccer field that I cannot see, I cannot experience, I cannot tune into, especially while I'm playing the game. So if you're in a game of life, you know, you get this very limited and skewed view of what's going on. And you think that everything you see or experience is all there is, right? But there's a tremendous amount more, even based on our idea of a, us being on a planet, that little square patch of soccer field is very minute it's a barely a speck on this this planet and imagine that even our planet is a speck or not even a speck in the grand scheme of all there is so we have to remember though that we have to get out of our own way a lot of times because we our perception of what we think is going on is probably way off base and i, I i'm not saying that because i, I think humans are incapable of fathoming those things or understanding those things i just don't think we take the time to pay attention to or tune in and listen to that force outside of ourselves to understand that they're trying to feed us information about the vastness that's around us that we should be tapping into and that we should be experiencing and moving into different directions now you say that because when you really tune into that and you really come into agreement, acceptance sometimes is maybe a better word, and allow the universe to do your bidding, to do your work for you, put out your intentions, of course, and where you would like to go and what you would like to do and what you'd like to have in life, and then really believe in that and just allow it to happen. And I've seen it so many times in my life, it's it's almost, I don't know, it's it's unfathomable to see how these pieces get put together. I could never design my life. I, I just can't imagine that in this little scope of what I can see every day. I just can't not imagine piecing this, this entire life together and gaining the experiences and, and the jobs and the things I've gotten to do that I didn't even really have to try to do. It's like they were kind of just dropped in I just had to accept those, take the challenge, and move on. And so I've had a lot of, lot of interesting experiences that most people will never have. And that is really a cool thing, to be honest. 
And like I said, I, I'm not necessarily even really trying in some ways. And I find sometimes if I try too hard, it's almost like swimming upstream. It's, it's uh, how do you say that? It's like sometimes the harder you try, the farther back you get. And allowing and accepting what the universe has for you is is a challenge, of course. And it is something I've had to really learn over the years because if some of the things that I have gone through are for my growth, man, I tell you what, I didn't necessarily like the growth parts of my life, and most of us wouldn't. In order to become a much better human, in other words, to become a much better soul in the process, you have to go through things to become refined. You cannot actually refine things without pressure and struggle and, and time. It's just part of the process. And the example I always use is a lump of coal under pressure for a long time becomes a diamond. And that's, I think, kind of the idea of what's going on here. So in a lot of ways, if you're going through the struggle, going through the challenges, Obviously, there's a limit, right? But if you're going through things that don't seem comfortable, you know, hey, I think you should celebrate because that is really telling you that you're being honed and refined for the next part of your process. Here recently, actually yesterday, I found out that a position that I had applied for in, as a state employee actually was accepted. And I, you know, I don't know how many people interviewed for it. It is interesting. I applied for it because I heard the calling to put it in my application, and I did. And it is actually going to be a decent amount of pay cut to take that position. It's like a more permanent position for a little bit less money versus the position I'm at now in like a deployment status, which is temporary, which could end you know at any time and change at any time. And so this is sort of like, you know, how do you weigh that out? I wasn't really sure why I was being instructed or heard that I needed to apply for this because it's really the job that I'm going to be doing is going to be a little bit different than I'm currently doing. But basically, the office is on the other side of the wall from where I'm at now, and I'll be effectively doing many of the same things I'm doing now for more money in some ways that didn't make any sense I'm like why would I want to make less money to do relatively the same thing but I listened and when I got the call I knew it was the right thing to do but you know it, it's whew, golly it's like what do you do when you run across those things like that those events those things that just you know are the right thing to do but you know that it's going to be a struggle because now you got to tighten up your belt on your budget. You got to change your way of life. You got to think a little differently about how you go about your day instead of, eh, hey, you know, we can buy this, we can buy that, we can do these things, we can add some more money to the business. Well, now it really, to be honest, it pushes me into a direction that I have really needed to go for a while because on a de quote unquote deployment status, you are eligible and expected to be on call basically 24 hours a day to be ready to work some days you know you can work half a day and other days you're working 18 hours so you really never know the schedule is all over the place very unpredictable and the business that i have which many of you know i have you know i do the psychic and mediumship uh paradigm and readings and connecting with people and a lot of other services that go with that and it's very, very difficult in that type of business to open up your schedule and allow people to book an appointment and then have to turn around and change that or reschedule that because, oh, by the way, there's a hurricane coming in and you get to work for the next two weeks, you know, for 14, 15 hours a day. And it's very difficult to actually build that business and connect with more people and help more people. And not impossible, but it, it seems these days it's very more, I should say, more people are inclined to go on to a website, 
and be more instantaneous about, yep, I want that appointment and click, boom, there we go. And so when, it, when that is taken away, it's very difficult to, to really connect with more people and to help more people. And I say help people because I learn as well. I've learned a lot of things from my, my clients, just like they're going to learn from me, which is really cool. In a lot of ways, this change is forcing me and giving me the opportunity to, okay, it is time to actually get back on the horse and get back to my personal business and begin to work that and to get more of these podcasts out, to do a lot of different things to help more people. And I believe that is my main mission in this life. And I could not really visualize how I was going to do that. I could not really figure out how I was going to create a bigger imprint in this world with that business and those services and those connections in the limited scope that I had in the deployment status I was in. I'm not saying that it was bad. Uh, we were able to use some of those funds to do a lot of different things. And I'm grateful and I'm very excited that I got to do those things. And in a lot of ways, that has prepared me for the position that I am going to be taking here in a couple of weeks. So it is really, if you look at those things, it is divine timing. It is absolutely something that had to be done in the sequence that it was done. We don't always accept those things because I know we all hear information. We all get it in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's a, a hunch. Sometimes it's a gut feeling. Sometimes it's a, a dream. Oh my gosh, dreams are very, very significant. It could be you hear something from a friend. You see something online. There's a lot of different things and di different ways that we get our information. This is not necessarily part of the talk. But I think you got to remember, though, that the spiritual realm or that realm, that universe, that cosmic collection of information, whatever name you give it, really is not bound by time. And so that is probably the hardest thing I've had to learn in this arena of what I do as a profession is that information that I get or that anybody gets from the universe is not necessarily aligned with the time we understand in our 24-hour clock kind of time. It is something that is so different and very hard to explain when you find yourself in this spiritual realm, I will call it that, where time is not a thing, where everything from the past, present, and future all happen at the same time. There's no sequence, there's no linear progress or process. It is hard to equate that to this realm where we are bound by so many laws of this universe, one of them being time, that when we get information, sometimes it does not make any sense whatsoever at the time we get it. And I have talked about this before, but I have gotten information through dreams that did not make sense for a year, <laughs> a whole year, right? And it gets even better. That same bit of information has shown up another five or six years later, and then a couple years later after that. And so it's a gift that keeps on giving. So you understand, though, that when we get information for ourselves or for others, sometimes we feel like we need to say things to people, and they might look at you like you're crazy. We all think that uh, we are a little bit crazy sometimes, but it really is kind of being normal, so I'll digress there. But the thing is that when we get that information, we need to understand that it is a good idea to hold on to that because a lot of times it's going to make sense in time and so far in my life all of it has eventually made sense in my life and I don't necessarily have to understand it I just have to accept it and understand that it's part of the process and that I will be guided using this information and when you do align with this information 
you will find, though, that it will sequence into your life and it will become very, very apparent at some point in your life that this is what it actually means. And I would also encourage you guys to really put some time into researching any messages or hunches or information that you get. You know, you look at something, you go, like, whew, interesting. You know, I see that those numbers a lot, you know, ones or two or sequences of twos, or I keep seeing the same patterns or the same things. Well, that's usually a sign that you need to pay attention to that symbology of the numbers or the things or the people. Go online. I mean, the Internet is teeming with information. I'm not saying everything you see online is going to align with that. But if you go research your dreams, for example, you will find, you know, probably a hundred different definitions for seeing something in your dreams. And you just have to kind of read through that and figure out what aligns with you and then take that alignment. And then it becomes part of your vocabulary for the universe. And you can then become begin to establish like a language or a, a way to speak or hear or understand the universe. And so I do that all the time. People ask me all the time, you know, what does this mean? I'm like, I don't know, go look it up and then let's talk about it. And I don't know where people come up with some of these definitions. I don't think it's important. I mean, like angel numbers. I mean, you can basically take almost any sequence of numbers and go on and find an angel number meaning for it. And like I said, I don't know where it comes from, but it doesn't matter. It, it always will align with you somehow in your life. And that's why you're seeing it. And so I don't want anybody to discount anything and understand, though, that everything is in divine timing. I say divine timing because we can't really figure those things out for ourselves sitting on the soccer field of life. We have to understand that there is much more out there that is trying to help us and trying to influence us and push us in a direction to help us evolve as a human Why we're here a very short time let's take advantage of that and let's not discount the fact that you know we think that everything that we need comes from within well maybe it does but there, I believe that there's a lot of outside influence that is also part of the equation now yes we, we could be encoded with everything that's possible to know in this universe every cell in our body might just contain everything there is to know about everything which is possible. Maybe that's not an outside influence, but it doesn't matter. It's kind of outside of our conscious mind. How's that? Let's, let's agree to that because our subconscious, I believe, is the connection to everything that there is. The cosmic depository or internet of this universe is connected to our subconscious. Now, I don't know. So, okay, let me back up. I think that is actually like if you look at your Wi-Fi in your house, you know, that box might be your subconscious, but it is connected to the World Wide Web, as we used to call it, the Internet, which is vastly teeming with information, just waiting for you to plug in and, and dial in and listen and, and then research. So I think that if we take advantage of that, knowing that we are connected at the subconscious level, at the cellular level, that's a hard word to say, at the level of every cell, then we would then begin to understand that we are that connection to all there is, all there was, and all there shall be, just like the religious texts like to say. And I do believe that we are like a, not a cog in a wheel, but we are part of the grand design of everything with all of us here and all the other life forms and all the other whatever that's out there we are all part of a bigger thing a bigger universe cosmos uh, all of eternity i don't even know how to describe it are we all have a role we all have a role in that and we have to understand that without our role, without our experiences, without our growth, then that grand thing, that grand universe, cosmos, cannot really evolve. It cannot survive even. 
So we need to do our part. Maybe we are here to have one of those lives that's not so good and it's always a struggle and it doesn't always have to be. But I think you understand that everybody is playing a role. Everybody is playing a piece. And just like in the human body, not every cell is designed to be the cell for the entire body. They're specially designed for, say, to be the liver cell or to be a kidney cell or to be a cell for whatever part of the body. But if they don't evolve and they don't survive and they don't thrive, then the body doesn't, doesn't thrive and survive. And so you understand that we are part of the grand picture, the grand idea, and that we need to be part of this. And understand that when we need to know something, when we need to change, when we need to go in a direction, whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable, whether it's a reward or a struggle, that that is part of the process. I am not saying we should lay down and just accept the, the, the worst things in the world, but understand that that part of that part of the process is probably necessary and that we need to dig in and really understand it research it meditate on it work through it and understand that on the other side of those things whether they're good or bad there's going to be another change and that's one of the things about life it's always evolving it's always changing it always will and so we just need to learn to accept that my generation, we grew up with the mentality that you were going to work for a company for 30 years, 40 years, and retire, and that was the game of life. I tell you right now, in our current social environment, that is not the case. Very seldom do we have people working for any company for that long. and It's just not the way it's designed. We are in a big change, a big flux Things are changing, things are evolving, things are happening that are allowing us to be different, to understand the differences, to actually explore these things. We should take advantage of those things, this dynamic while we can. That may change. I don't know. There's a lot of radical changes, I believe, coming up, you know, January 20th with a new president and a new administration. Oh, I guess old or new, whatever but a different one. You know, we are about to make ma major changes again. And so just when you think you get settled in on an idea and a way of life and the way the economy is going, all these things, things are going to change. They will always change. There's nothing that you can do about that. To be honest, I think it would be pretty boring if you simply went to the same job for 30 years, 40 years, got a gold watch, and then tried to live on the retirement nuggets that you <laughs> thought you were going to have and it just doesn't seem to be the old golden years like they preach it to be or preached it to be i personally like lots of change i like the challenges sometimes they're not fun sometimes they're like "Ooh, wow that's a big pay cut you know but you got to look at it in in a different light sometimes because there's always reasons there's always a plan it doesn't have to be our plan. We don't always have to make it up. That's okay. Just understand that there is a plan. There is a team, in my opinion, of guides, at least for me, that really help and guide me and nudge me and push me and talk to me, direct me, all those things. And I'm not saying that I could prove that. That's not, not really the point here. But that is how I interpret that. And I think many people out there would admit and accept that there are some type of entities or external forces that do influence us many religions are based on that many ideas are based on that it is hard to imagine that this creation that we live in earth reality whatever that actually is is very immaculately detailed it would be hard to imagine that there's not some external force you know, keeping this all together. And maybe that's all of us, like we talked about before. Let us move on here. Just remember, though, that we are in a limited scope of life. We can only see a small sliver of what's available. So we must learn to accept information, nudges, guidance, words from others, experiences, so that we can grow as a human evolve as a human and wherever we go next it'll be 
part of the equation in the path forward. If there is a forward in that time, the spiritual realm. I encourage you guys to go to my website, lifebymazak.com, L-I-F-E-B-Y-M-A-Z-A-K.com. There's a contact page. Reach out to me. Let's have a conversation because, as I say in every podcast, I learn from you. You learn from me. We all learn. And it's nice to hear other ideas and figure out how we can all congeal together and make this a much better reality earth place. I encourage you to reach out to me. You will always hear from me. Stay strong and live your life.